Let's talk social media planning for floral designers and here are four shortcuts to help you get more customers online. Hello friends, welcome back to another fun-filled adventure in talking about digital marketing and social media strategies for floral designers. And if you're new here, welcome to the greatest little corner of the interwebs. You're in exactly the right place if you're a floral designer, flower farmer, a person who wants to be making money and building a profitable business from flowers in 2022 and beyond. And my name is Kathleen and this is my most favorite space. So we all know by now, I hope, social media is here to stay. I remember when we were first sorting through marketing in our flower shop that we literally <laughs> were weighing up the pros and cons of advertising in the phone book. Like that was literally an option on the table for us and the business before we bought it had been doing it for years and years and years prior to us taking it over. I laugh when I think about it, but marketing has changed so much in such a small period of time and it will forever continue to change but one of the things I now know for sure is that social media is a very valuable part of every floral designers marketing strategy and the truth of the matter is the last 24 months 36 months has totally changed consumer behavior and getting your digital marketing plan sorted for your flower business whether you have a physical retail shop or not is an absolute must in order for you to grow your revenue in 2022, 2023, and beyond. This is kind of crazy, but it is estimated that online retail is going to double by 2025, like just in three years. I thought a lot of people were shopping online. I do my fair share of shopping online, but that volume of revenue is going to actually double in the next three years. So getting your digital marketing plan sorted is the priority and it is the name of the game. And I am here to help to make it easier for you to sift through all of the bits and pieces to cut through the confusion and get results in your business. So I found this list the other day when I googled social media platforms and I didn't actually count but I think there are like 20 items on this list. But the thing that's really confusing about the whole world of social media and digital marketing in general is that some of this terminology is used interchangeably and many times people are talking about things being a social media platform when they're not actually a social media platform. So it just adds to the confusion and all of the overwhelm that we feel as business owners going, I need to know exactly what to do, I need to cut through the confusion, I need you to make it simple. So lesson number one is I really want to encourage you to simplify your approach to social media. Very, very specifically, I want you to really understand that many of the platforms that are listed on this fancy little chart aren't actually social media platforms at all. They are other platforms that are basically options in terms of digital marketing, but they aren't social media platforms. They are actually search engines. So things like YouTube and things like Pinterest aren't actually social media platforms. They're not built to be social. They're not built for a conversation. They're not built for engagement. The foundation of many of these platforms are actually built based on a search engine. I want to give you full permission. If Pinterest doesn't need to be part of your social media strategy because it's a search engine, park it to the side for a minute. Same thing with your Google My Business listing, same thing with Google Ads, same thing with the Google search engine optimization machine, same thing with YouTube. And you can go back to this list and you can see that there are so many platforms listed on here that just aren't even going to be relevant to you and your business. So at the end of the day, for our business, we have found that Instagram has been the biggest driver for revenue when it comes to daily flower deliveries and wedding inquiries. So on this long list of options, the first thing to know is not every platform is actually a social media platform. So get the terminology right and really understand what is a social media platform, what is a search engine, and which ones you can just completely ignore all together. When you find a long list like this, or when somebody comes to you and says, oh, hey, you should be doing this in terms of your social media, you should be on this platform, or let's say you as a user love being on Facebook. Maybe you love Instagram, maybe you love Twitter, maybe you're a lover of TikTok. It kind of doesn't matter what platforms you like. The most important thing to know is that you need to think like your customer. Putting yourself in your customer's shoes is the shortcut to simplifying your social media strategy. Because it might be that in your case, your customers 
aren't on Twitter. Maybe they're not on Facebook. Maybe they're not even on TikTok. And maybe you just get to simplify your approach and all you need to do is focus on Instagram. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see floral designers make is that with the massive rise of TikTok, everybody's like, oh, okay, well, I need to all of a sudden completely change my social media strategy. I need to pour all of my time and energy into TikTok. But if it's not delivering increased orders for you, if you're not seeing an increase in your revenue, if there's no more money going into your bank account, ask yourself if it's worth your time and energy. And this idea of really understanding that if you put yourself in your customer's shoes and then you can always, 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 always run a 30 day experiment and then decide, has this made a difference in my business? Have I seen an increase in revenue in my business? Or am I just kind of following a trend because it's something that I think I'm supposed to be doing? and we all do it. So you don't have to beat yourself up over it. You don't have to like shame yourself into being like, oh, I should have known better. We figure these out as we go, but we get to make the decision that's best for our business. And lesson number three is prioritize. And this is a skill to continue to develop because it doesn't matter if you're in year one of your business or maybe you're in year 21 of your business. Because digital marketing and because social media are constantly changing, it's super helpful to remember and to like proactively give your future self permission <laughs> to come back and recalibrate and reevaluate your social media strategy. And for example, even though there are now more than 1 billion users on TikTok, it's very possible that that time and energy that you think you should be spending on TikTok, that time and energy that you are spending and investing in creating content and trying to grow your following may not be doing anything to grow your business. So really look at the data and come back to the simple fact of lesson number two, put yourself in your customer's shoes. And this is one of the best examples that I have because I found that over time, after we decided to not advertise in the phone book anymore, this is like in the days of the dinosaurs, my friends, but one of the things that we noticed is that the kinds of customers that were coming to us from Facebook were really low budget, low value, kind of pain in your ass, customers. So we actually stopped putting any energy into our social media strategy on Facebook. And I think the very last post on our Facebook page from August of 2019 <laughs> says, if you're looking for us, please come on over and find us on Instagram. Like we literally just stopped using Facebook as a strategy to get customers in our business. Now I'm not saying that's exactly what you need to do in your business, but I want to use that as an example for really getting in touch with your customers, looking at how the different social media channels that you are choosing to participate in and how are they each contributing to delivering to your revenue and your profitability, knowing you get to decide which platforms you prioritize and you get to decide which ones are right for you in your business. And lesson number four, and this is one of my favorite lessons to remind every floral designer on the planet about. And this is why marketing a flower business is very different to marketing any other business on the planet. Every new day is a whole new group of customers. Literally the sun rises, the sun sets. New babies are born. Somebody's just had surgery. Somebody's just gotten a promotion. Somebody just bought a house. Somebody else is just starting the process of planning Nana's 80th wedding. A couple has just started the planning process for their wedding. Like every single day, there's a whole new set of customers that could potentially come your way. So give yourself permission to hit reset any single time that you want to. And it doesn't matter if you haven't shown your face on Instagram in the last 30 days. Today is the perfect day to try it out. And it doesn't matter if you do it today, <laughs> it feels really awkward because tomorrow a whole new group of customers are coming your way. So it's like this constant turnstile of amazing possibility and potential. And this is what makes marketing your flower business so different because in every other industry, everybody's worried about growing your following and what's the algorithm doing and what's happening over here and how many followers have you got and you need to create engaging content. And it's like, no, <laughs> literally somebody else has just come along and they're searching hashtag Chicago florist. <laughs> 
care if you have 62 followers, 6,200 followers, or 62,000 followers. Literally. They're like, I just need flowers delivered tomorrow. Can you help me? So that is the most important thing to remember is that your social media strategy gets to be very different to what you see in every other industry. So while all of the social media gurus are out there telling you to create engaging content and grow your following and expand your reach and get more exposure, I'll be like, no, simplify. <laughs> Cut through half of the junk, ignore three quarters of what they're saying, and really understanding how your customers use social media, prioritize where your customers are, and then really sit down and think about that plan and proactively, like proactively map out your social media strategy ahead of time. So lesson number four, my friends, is you get to hit reset anytime that you want to because it's a new day and there's new customers. And I also wanna remind you, if you are a floral designer, a farmer florist, and you are struggling to sort through all the ins and outs of social media, come join me in the Flower Boss Academy. This is my new monthly membership program where you get step-by-step guidance, step-by-step -step strategies, and all of my templates when it comes to sorting through all of the ups and downs of digital marketing. And even better, you get access to private one-on-one -on -one coaching every single week. Plus, we have a whole library of live classes that we offer to really help you get your digital marketing game sorted. All you have to do is visit flowerbossacademy.com and this is a totally flexible, completely on your terms monthly membership program. There's no joining fee, there's no cancellation fee. You can literally sign up for one month. If you decide it's not for you, cancel your membership within two clicks of the mouse. And as always, my friends, I hope that this video has been helpful. Go out there, simplify your approach to social media, know that we get to follow a totally different set of rules, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you really liked this video, and as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please, my friends, have the most amazing week, and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now.